What's going on smart people? Today we are wrapping up the series on what to expect in your physics degree and we're going to be finishing up year four. Now to be honest, there's gray area when it comes to year three, year four classes and for that reason I highly recommend you check out my year three video if you haven't already. I say that because though year three is the year that you're typically allowed to start taking your ENM, your quantum classes, stuff like that, a lot of people do push it off to their senior year. That way they're not taking so many 400 level classes all at once. It depends on the university, but I recommend checking out that video for a description of the quantum and ENM courses. But for this video, I'm more or less just going to be sharing the courses that I took for my final year in my physics degree. First semester of my fourth year, I took a course in computational physics, and this is where you solve problems, you solve physics problems by writing codes to solve them for you. Basically, you would work through the physics until all that was left was a well-defined math problem, and that's where the computational physics came in. That's where you would actually write the codes to solve the problem. This is also the semester where I took my first course in quantum mechanics, hence why I said that third year, fourth year thing is a little gray. I know a lot of third years that took quantum their third year, and I know a lot of fourth years who took quantum their fourth year. Since I talked about it in the previous video, I'm not going to go in depth into quantum in this one, but basically the first semester of quantum was just solving the Schrodinger equation in one and three dimensions. But this semester is also where I took my 400 level elective, which is pretty common for universities, especially if you go to ODU. Now, one of the thing about these 400 level electives is that they typically have a bunch of prerequisites. I took atomic physics, and the prereq for that was, you know, your quantum and all that good stuff. Granted, I took it at the same time as quantum, uh, so they had to wave, they had to override me into the course, which I don't recommend doing. Atomic was an extremely difficult course for me because I really wasn't up for it. Still made it out with an A-, minus, but it, I don't know. I don't know if I would do that again. But this is the year where you'll typically take one of those specialty courses like atomic or nuclear physics, condensed matter. Now, at least at ODU, one of the classes that every physics major has to do is called a senior thesis class. And that's where you essentially team up with a professor and they sort of show you how to do research. They have a problem that they want to solve. They think it's something that an undergrad might be capable of helping out with. And you sort of just work with them. So I worked with my atomic physics professor, he was a theorist, but that was actually a year-long course. At the end of the year, you present what you did, you write a 20-page paper, and then you don't really talk about it ever again. Usually these papers aren't published, it's really just to get you a feel for doing research if you don't do, say, an internship. Next semester. The next semester was actually kind of boring for me because I just took the second half of that quantum class and I just finished my senior thesis. However, other people that I knew were taking their thermodynamics in their second semester of ENM. I had just taken that a little bit early. Now the rest of this video is really just going to pertain to you who are thinking about pursuing grad school. So if you're going into your fourth year and then you're going to go straight into university, into university, into industry, then you're done with this video. I can't help you anymore. I know nothing about how to get into industry. But for those of you who are going to grad school, this is the year where you have to take the GRE and the physics GRE, two different tests. The GRE is really just the SAT 2.0. You've got your critical reading, you've got your basic math questions, your fill in the blank, all that good stuff, and it's split into sections. Now, how well you do on the first sections limits how difficult the next section's questions will be. But in doing so, it also limits the top score that you can get on the GRE. So if you're taking the GRE and then in the next sections you feel the question's getting a little bit easier, I don't think that's a good sign. If you want more information on that, just do a Google search on is the GRE adaptive and you'll find plenty of information. Moving on to the physics GRE, the physics GRE is a 100 question multiple choice standardized test that uh, sucks. I think on average it comes out to about two minutes per question, which is a huge culture shock once you first start studying for it. So get started right away. This test covers things like classical mechanics, ENM, thermodynamics, quantum, and special topics. You can find out more about these topics and the questions that will be asked by visiting the ETS website, which I will link in the description. Now the GRE is offered multiple times a year, but the physics GRE, so much as I remember, is only offered twice a year, so you really got to make sure that you nail it the time that you take it. I believe last year the final physics GRE you could take was uh, right before Halloween, and right after that you have to start filling out your grad school applications. Most schools' priority deadlines for admissions for uh, grad school applications is in between December 15th and January 15th, but I have seen some go as late as like almost late February and nothing before December 1st. 
But this is priority decision. You're welcome to apply almost at any time, but if you apply after that decision or if you apply after that priority deadline, your application is getting sent to the bottom. A great resource for finding out grad schools that offer specialties and what you think you might want to specialize in is Grad School Shopper. It's free to use, but it's not free for universities to be a part of. So just because you don't see a university on Grad School Shopper doesn't mean that they don't offer the specialty that you're looking for. It just might mean that they didn't want to pay to have their information stored on the website. It's also not always accurate. So if you find a school that says that they offer a specialty in one field, go to that school's website and double check it. Fact check it for yourself. But it is a great jumping off point and uh, being able to speak with professors additionally who can recommend certain schools for what you're interested in, that'll help a lot. But that's going to do it for this video. In this video we talked about these upper level physics classes, we talked about the GRE, physics GRE, grad school applications. It is a jam packed year, but try to have fun with it. Let me know in the comments section if you have any additional questions about this year and I'll see you guys there.